This week in Nerf, we've got the return of Vortex Blasters, CNC flywheel cages, and ammo counters. I'm Jangular, and every Saturday morning, this is your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. Getting right to it. Like I said, the return of Vortex. There was a leak posted on a Japanese blog website, uh, Vyashis11. Vyashis11? Yeah, that sounds right. That's, I'm probably saying that terribly wrong, but regardless, their blog post, which has been the source for several leaks in the past that were confirmed, posted some images of some new Vortex Blasters. Well, I shouldn't say new Vortex Blasters. Let me rephrase. Repainted Vortex Blasters. New in the sense that Vortex, we thought, was gone. We thought it was done. And we thought the line was just plain dead, which was a bummer for the people that liked it because it really was a fun system. Uh, if you had the right environment for it, Vortex was an absolute blast to play with, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So this is definitely welcoming to me to see these coming back. Um, I'm, I'm based on the history of this person, I'm going to give this the likelihood that this is going to be real. I, I'm going to operate under the assumption that these are more than likely correct and real, uh, especially since they have a boxed Vigilon in one of the pictures. And important to note is it does have an exclusive at Target sticker on it, so we know that these will likely be Target exclusives here in the US, which probably means, I believe, what, Argos over in the UK. Um, and we'll see what happens in Singapore and Australia and other places. But uh, important to note that these will be exclusives in certain locations. Uh, we saw, I believe it was the Praxis, the uh, Vigilon, and the Pyragon, I believe were the three in the image that was leaked. And uh, they all have a new paint scheme, which is cool. I like it. Uh, I definitely dig changing things up and giving some more variety to the way Vortex Blasters look. Uh, personally, I am glad the Pyragon is coming back. I love the Pyragon. I will be looking forward to that and probably running at a game again in the future. That will be definitely a lot of fun. Uh, this may be a slight renaming of this line, although in addition to the naming of the line, maybe, because you'll see in the picture, one of the pictures of the box, it says Vortex VTX. So maybe they are shifting the name from Vortex to VTX. It sounds cooler, I guess. Uh, if you give something an abbreviation, it, maybe that's more appealing to people. We'll see what happens with this line in the future. If these sell well, maybe we'll get new designs in the future. That would be cool. That would be awesome. And I would definitely look forward to that. But uh, I will have the link down below to the blog post. Uh, if you speak or read Japanese and feel like translating anything to see if there's anything of interest in there, Feel free to let me know down in the comments. Definitely would appreciate that. But let's go ahead and move on. Our second topic of the day is Heston Systems. This is a new company based out of here in California in the USA, actually run by the family that runs Eban Games, which are a very large Nerf game that they pull lots of people. Uh, they're awesome people as well, but they have been working on a CNC aluminum flywheel cage, and it is now released. It is called the Typhoon Cage. It is a... Uh, non-canted, HVZ-oriented, uh, accuracy-forward flywheel cage. Uh, that is all essentially the kind of design idea behind it was that they wanted something that wasn't super high velocity, would be good for HVZ, so it's hitting around 130 FPS, it seems, currently. Uh, it does have custom wheels that go with the cage, and it's all geared towards that HVZ player at a price point of $60 for the cage and wheels, which... For a Cajun wheels, C and C, that's not too bad. Uh, I think that's actually a pretty good price point for a, a C and C aluminum cage with custom wheels geared towards quality uh, build and performance. So this is something I'm relatively excited about. I may not play a ton of HVZ, but I do play in games where lower velocity limits do exist. So this is appealing to me. Uh, you know, I like quality price. You know, I like options. So... I'm probably going to pick one of these up in the future and uh, enjoy running it to add to my myriad of cages and flywheel combinations. But I, I definitely want to see how these perform in the accuracy range. Uh, we have gotten a video from Foam Blast who 
uh, has one in hand and has been doing some testing. So if you want to check that out, I will have a link down below to that as well. And they definitely enjoyed the cage. They actually compared it head to head against a Dr. Snickers cage, which is a pretty high bar to test against in terms of uh, accuracy for HVZ and things like that as they kind of have become this elevated status uh, for the DRS cage. So something that gets close to that for a lower price point and higher availability is definitely a plus. But I'll let you go explore that video for yourselves and uh, actually see what other people are saying once they get them in hand because I am very, very curious and uh, very glad we have another option that kind of goes towards that tier, I suppose you could say, uh, even though I know we don't like using the, the word tier in this hobby so much at times, uh, that, that, that quality. I like that they're pushing towards that quality is essentially what I'm getting at here. So I'm glad to see it. And I hope we see more from them in the future. Uh, and I hope this cage works as well as it looks like it's going to work because that I like accuracy. I like accuracy a lot. So I, I'm, I'm a fan of that. I hope it works as intended, but let's, let's move on because I can ramble about that all day if we don't. Ammo Counter, which uh, has been doing some cool stuff for a while now with their uh, ammo counters, as the name implies, uh, has released a video showcasing the new V3 Universal Kit. And this thing is tiny. Ho oh, ho, it's so small. If you remember the first kit, it was... It was hefty. It was a significant size to fit everything inside of it. And the V2 was like half the size, which was really impressive. And this thing is, it's small. It's really small. And that has me really excited. Uh, I also like that you can, um, if you already have an IR beam set up inside of a blaster, you can just take the V2 or V1, pop that off, and pop the V3 Universal Kit on and just plug in the IR beam that you already had installed. And that, to me, is a great design choice because not everyone's necessarily going to want to pop open the blaster, gut the, the IR beam setup that you had, and buy a new one and put that in. So I really like that they, they made it function with existing systems so you could save a little bit on your upgrade cost if you want to. Um, so I really, I, I, I dig ammo counters. They may not be the most necessary thing for all mods or all blasters, but they are a nice thing to have, especially if you aren't great at counting your shots and you want to be able to quickly glance down and see where you're at. Uh, they definitely have a benefit there. So I, I just, I love seeing that these companies continue to just try and better themselves, better their products and push forward a little bit more and more and more every single time. Now, I don't have a price on this yet. I, both the videos I watched, maybe I missed it. If I did, please let me know it in the comments, but these will be out in the next two to four weeks, I believe it was, uh, before End War, we should be seeing these out. So at latest, uh, no more than, than a couple months away. I assume we'll see them before that, though. So I, uh, I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to these. I've been wanting to get my hands on one for a while now, but I haven't had the right build for it. Um, I, I want to, when I do it, I want to put it in the right build. I'm sure a lot of you have the same thought that you want to put something on something that you really like and really, really makes sense for it. But I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting on about this. I just think it's cool. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments below because I love hearing your thoughts on all these different third-party accessories and parts and mod kits and everything uh, because it's all of you that drive these companies to continue to innovate and keep things interesting. So with that said, let's get to our mod of the week, which this week comes to us from Edge Attachments. This is a mini HPA Boomco MA5. I actually suggested this in the comments last week when I requested people suggest mods of the week so please cool videos cool mods link them down below i love seeing them sometimes i miss cool things such as this case because this thing is awesome it is a super minimized hpa powered uh boomco ma5 essentially and it's tiny he got this down to the bare bones uh and it it fires well it i like that he actually built up a mag backpack or clip backpack, whatever you want to call it, for his Boomco clips. And uh, has that, he actually did a video on this, which is what we're going to link to uh, 
rather than any post or anything like that because the video is interesting in and of itself and I definitely dig the idea and the thought process behind this and doing something for some Boomco with HPA. We, we often see Nerf with HPA, but seeing a Boomco branded, you know, the, 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 the sticky darts being used with the HPA system is definitely a nice change and seeing, you know, the, the MA5 get a little bit of love despite it not being... Well, not being my favorite functional blaster, I appreciate that he has made it work fantastic. So definitely go check that video out. will be linked down below. But on the topic of videos, the video of the week this week comes to us from TK1138. And this is his FDL 2 one year review. Now we get a lot of reviews about a lot of products all the time when they're fresh on the scene. Uh, because everybody wants to know how it performs, how it does, and that makes sense. You want to have an informed opinion before you buy something. But the FDL2 is a platform that has been around for a little while now, and TK138 has been uh, a big proponent of them. So he has used both the original FDL2 and the upgraded versions, and he thought, why not give a comprehensive review of his thoughts and experiences over the course of a year of just using one all the time. So this gave some really good insight, in my opinion, from someone who has used the system and, and has explored it and had thoughts going into it. Like maybe he wouldn't like the, the button trigger. Maybe he wouldn't like not having knobs anymore when he switched to the newer version of the FDL2. Um, so it was really nice to see the changes in his mindset as he experienced things and, and where he's at on them. So if you've been thinking about an FDL2 and are maybe on the fence, definitely go give this one a watch. I, I enjoyed it and I appreciated it. So that is why it is the video of the week. And like I said, if you have a mod of the week or a video of the week that you think should be on the show, link me in the comments. I love seeing things that I missed somehow. Uh, I, I, good surprises are just fantastic. So do not be afraid to link something. Even if I don't use it, I will love looking at it. Uh, so please, please do so. And if you are new to the channel and enjoy this video, feel free to the subscribe button for in the future. Uh, if you want to check out the video of the week, go ahead and click right over here because it's going to be right there. If you want to subscribe because you enjoyed the video, click right over here. And uh, if you want to see your name on the bottom scrolling through as you saw for the patrons and you want to help support the show and make it possible to do even more amazing things, go ahead and click right Right here for Patreon. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.